Good morning, friends, and welcome to Wake Up in the Word. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are in the Gospel of Matthew, walking through the life of Christ, and today we're going to arrive at one of his signature miracles, I think we could say. So grab you a good cup of coffee and join me in the Word of God, Matthew chapter 14. Now, while we're getting there, let me mention something. I'm recording this May the 18th, 2021, over the past week. Over 3,000 rockets have been fired from the Gaza Strip into Israel. Some of those rockets didn't even make it out of Gaza. Some fell back down innocent civilians there, even killing some of them. Uh, the news media seems to be so clueless as to what's really going on in the nation of Israel. And uh, yet, as they continue to parrot some left-wing and even Islamist terrorist bylines, I want you to know that what we're seeing is lining up so directly with Scripture. It is just uh, uh, scarily exciting. Yes, it's something to be concerned over, but it's amazing to see how the very players laid out in Scripture, especially by the prophet Ezekiel in the Old Testament and by Jesus himself in the New Testament by, by John, are all lining up along Armageddon's battle lines, we might say, to bring to pass the things that are supposed to happen in the last generation before Jesus comes. So it is an exciting time. We even watched yesterday the leaders of Turkey and Iran, both players that are listed in, in Ezekiel's list back in chapter 38 of, of his great prophetic book, were talking to each other about what to do about this Jewish state that we want to see exterminated. I mean, it's amazing because... Uh, less than a generation ago, Turkey was an ally of the West with more of a West-leaning culture and government, still many of those people there. But uh, the leadership right now is fully engaged in this idea of bringing together uh, Islamic nations to fight against Israel and remove her once and for all. So friends, watch this scenario being played out on the world stage exactly as Scripture said it would be. In the meantime, we get back to our scripture. We're in Matthew chapter 14, beginning in verse 13. And that's the verse that follows yesterday's wake up in the words. So you might remember that that's when Jesus heard that John the Baptist had been executed, beheaded by a wicked king. And we heard that story yesterday. What did Jesus do in response to that? Well, what many of us do in a time of grief and sorrow. It says, when Jesus heard about it, that's the execution of John, he withdrew from there by boat to a remote place to be alone. Of course, he needed to be alone. He needed some time alone with God. He needed to process all this. He needed to grieve. But look what happened. What always was happening when Jesus was trying to get his alone time with the Father. It says, when the crowds heard this, they followed him on foot from the towns. When we went ashore, when he went ashore, excuse me, he saw a large crowd and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. When an evening came, the disciples approached him and said, this place is deserted and it's already late. Send the crowds away so they can go into the villages and buy food for themselves. They don't need to go away, Jesus told them. You give them something to eat. Do you feel the panic in these guys at that point? You give them something to eat. Lord, we don't have anything. What are you talking about? Give us, give, what? In verse 17, they responded, we, we have only five loaves and two fish here. We know from one of the other gospel writers, that was just the little boy's lunch that he had brought. And so they're, they're like, we don't have anything to feed these people with. Verse number 18 says, Jesus speaking, bring them here to me. Then he commanded the crowds to sit down on the grass. He took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he blessed them. He broke the loaves, gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. Everyone ate and was satisfied. They picked up 12 baskets full of leftover pieces. And now those who ate were by about 5,000 men besides women and children. Jesus takes what looks like a very small amount of food, 
a tiny amount of food. It might have been okay for a couple, maybe a small family. He takes that amount of food, blesses it, and feeds thousands. Yeah, it was just 5,000. We call it the feeding of the 5,000. There were 5,000 men, not counting the women and children. He feeds a crowd bigger than what we had at the Fireflies baseball game the other night in Columbia. He's feeding a huge amount of people. What a beautiful picture of his miraculous abilities as Messiah, Lord. Now, what do we take away from this? Three things I want you to grasp as we finish up this morning. Number one, let grief drive you to compassion. Now, look what Jesus is going through. He's just had the news about the death of John the Baptist, who, remember, is also his first cousin. So here he is dealing with that. It would have been a good time for him to just say, y'all, get away from me. I need some quiet time. Leave me alone. He could have said that. But instead, when the crowds continued to follow him, he had compassion on them. Now, folks, you can, in your grief, when things go south, go sour, maybe you've lost a loved one, you're dealing with all kinds of tragedy in your life, you can let it either make you bitter or make you better. In this case, Jesus is demonstrating for us how grief can drive you to compassion. Let your grief be a time when, yes, you turn to the Lord, but let the lessons learned make you a better person, a more godly person, a compassionate person. Secondly, the awesome power of Christ, of course, is demonstrated here, but I want you to grasp something. That power is only available to his followers. They followed him out into the wilderness. The folks back in town who were sitting in their comfy and cozy accommodations did not get to experience this miracle. Jesus may seem to lead you into some wilderness places, but friends, remember, that's where the power of Christ will be. The power of Christ is not with those who are self-sufficient, who didn't need to hear his word, won't study his word, won't come to church, won't have anything to do with him. The power of Christ is only available to his followers. Remember that. That's a picture we don't always pull out of this miracle, but we should. The awesome power to feed the 5,000 was only laid down for those who had followed him and wanted to hear his teachings and be a part of his miraculous ministry. He didn't just say, okay, now let's go bless all those who, you know, who refused us, who are against us. Let's go take, some, let's go take a food basket to the Pharisees here. Let, no, no, no. You didn't see any of that. Friends, even today, the miraculous power of Jesus Christ is still available. Do you think he's gone to sleep? No, he has not. But it's available to his followers. Thirdly, Christ will multiply your offering. Christ will multiply your offering. Look what he took. He took something that started the process. The offering of a little boy who brought his five loaves and two fish and said, Jesus, take these and use them if it will help feed these people. Probably willing to miss a meal himself. I'm a strong young man. I'll be fine. Feed some of these old folks. <laughs> you, know, you have to think about the attitude of this person willing to give their all to Jesus. You know, sometimes we run into folks who say, well, I know the ministry needs are great, but I only have a little to give. Listen, don't ever apologize for the little amount that you have to give. We, we look at some of these millionaires and billionaires who hang on to their money or, or use it for ridiculous causes, and we think, what can I do versus that? Oh, listen, it's the power of Christ upon the offering that you bring that really matters. What you have is enough when it's put in the hands of Jesus. You know, we think in terms of feeding the 5,000. Every week, we feed a number of kids in our after-school program here in Winsboro, South Carolina. It's something that's not a specific line item in our budget. We do have a youth ministry budget, but we depend on uh, ways for these kids to be fed each and every week. It may not be 5,000, but sometimes it's amazing to see how God sends the offerings and sends people that say, hey, I want to feed those kids on Wednesday night. Can I help? Uh, and just overwhelmingly provides our own association. Let me Metro Baptist Association even provided an an offering for us, some ministry, a ministry grant fund to help feed them. And, and, you know, every time we turn around, we see God because he loves this ministry. We see Jesus putting his hand on the five loaves and the two fish 
just to keep on feeding these kids who are trying to reach for Christ. So, you know, you've probably got ministries just like that. You've seen him over and over multiply ministry. Our friends down here at the Oliver Gospel Mission in Columbia have similar experiences of how God just continues to provide because it's a ministry that's at the heart of God. Friends, I don't want you to ever think that what you have to offer God is too little or too late. Give and give generously what you can. Don't fret over the fact that it's not enough to make a difference. When the people of God are willing to give what they have, even if it's only five loaves and two fish, Jesus will take it, he will bless it, and the ministry will be multiplied. So, you know, one final caveat on that. Please, churches, ministries, quit saying we can't do this and we can't do that. We must stop doing ministry because it costs so much money. Of course, ministry costs money. Of course, ministry is worth it. So don't, don't sit back and say, well, we can't do ministry because look at the cost. Now, the costs are going up and people just don't want to give anymore. Listen, take what God's people give you and let Jesus put his hands on it and he'll show you how you can multiply. But woe unto us as churches, denominations even, who sit back and say, we're just going to stop doing this ministry. We can't afford this anymore. My friends, we can't afford not to do ministry. Give it to Jesus. He'll multiply it. He'll feed the 5,000 and even more. Thank you for spending some time with me this morning. Keep following Jesus and you'll see him do even greater works than these. God bless you. I'll see you again right here tomorrow as we wake up in the world.